Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Theodora Scarato, and she's going to be talking about cell phones, electromagnetic fields, and your health, and why it's important. You know, I'm going to be honest, I know nothing about this topic, and I first heard of her in February when we both were speakers for the fabulous online The Real Truth About Health Conference, and I got to say, what she says is kind of scary. Please welcome her to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, first of all, how did, why is this such an interesting topic to you? And why are you, why is this so important to you? You know, I am a clinical social worker and several years ago, I came into this issue a decade now and I had heard on the radio, oh, cell phones can scramble your brain or something like that. And I, I was like, wait, what, what are you talking about? Cell phones? What? So I had been working with kids who had uh, their parents or especially their mothers had done drugs and they had a lot of emotional issues and I directed an intensive therapy program and was doing a lot of research on the impacts to the brain at the time. So when I started digging into this and it seemed like the federal government was saying it's fine or everything's fine, I saw all this research showing impacts to the brain. And that's what got me involved because impacts to the brain as with lead, uh, you know, how much IQ points do we want to lose for technology? Now, I have to tell you, when I heard about it, I, I didn't believe it at all. In fact, I, I, uh, I was sure that there couldn't be a problem, but I just kept researching it. And uh, now I work with some of the uh, eminent top independent scientists in the world at Environmental Health Trust. I'm executive director. Uh, we do conferences. We educate policymakers. We have community uh, educational meetings. We publish science. And I am honored to be really working on this because once I understood the issue, just like with food or with water or with any of the issues where we try to live more healthy, this is just one of those issues. And uh, it's time has come. Oh. Why isn't it, I mean, because I, you know, I don't think I had my hair head buried in the sand, but this doesn't seem as like people aren't talking about this quite as much as some other things. You know what I mean? You know, that is true, but actually there's a lot of science and there's been a lot of coverage of this a decade ago when I first learned about it, for example, and I didn't really know much at all. It had been classified as a class 2B possible carcinogen because there were studies showing people who use the phone to their head heavily for years had higher rates of uh, brain cancer in certain studies. So, so I knew a guy, remember when cell phones were like, they were like the size, like remember they were huge, right? right? And I had this, this, this friend, like I'm talking like 30 years ago when nobody could really afford him, but he, he was able to have this and he got brain cancer and he swears that's why he got it. Mm. Yeah. Well, there are uh, studies that show that link heavy long-term use, especially those older phones, you know, there's a lot, they, they had a lot of power. Now the newer phones are different, but the way the it's not better is what I'm trying to say is they've changed how they are. And one of the things that people do now is they're always on their phone or their phone is in their pocket or in their bra. And we have case reports and actually a case control study linking the cell phone in the bra to cancer right where the phone was placed and used. Oh my God. Like if I were a fanny pack, is that enough of a buffer that it's not right on my body, but it's, do you know what I'm saying? Is that enough of a buffer? Is that still too close to my body? You know, everyone asks that question, what's, what's safe? How far away is safe? Uh, and I would say you want to keep a distance as much as possible. So you don't want it touching your body. Every uh, millimeter, every inch makes a difference, but you really want to keep it um, at a distance. So I would recommend turning it on airplane mode. Uh, when you put it in your fanny pack, actually. And now if you need a phone, if you need to be on call, put it on speaker or put it over, you know, on the table away from yourself. That's, that's what we would recommend. And the best thing to do is what I do at home, which is get a, I'm kind of going in the rabbit hole, but get a corded phone if you can, even if I you saw. can't get a corded landline. 
Let me oh show you. They, they still make those. <laughs> you know, they do. And uh, they do. And they're, they're really an important part. If you can be at home, if you're at home, you can get a vo voice over IP. You can, um, I use my computer a lot of times when I'm out. Uh, so yeah, but the first thing is your phone. It's kind of like with food, right? One step at a time, keep the phone away from your body. Don't put it to your head. Don't I, put it in your pocket. I don't, I just, I, I even without knowing this, I've always used speaker phone just because I don't know. I just, that's how I roll. I mean, cause I'm always doing something like cooking. So I just never like talking like this anyway, but um, one of the live viewers is saying, well, what about wireless earbuds? Is that better? Yeah. So anything wireless, unfortunately is going to uh, expose your body to radiation. So if you use a phone to your head, the level is quite high that your body's going to absorb right into your brain. If you have it at a distance and use anything, it's going to be less, except two things. You're still getting it right there in your ear. And a lot of people will put it in and just leave it in there for a long time. It's better to use something called um, air tube headsets, actually, or speaker would be what we would recommend. We have a page on our website uh, all about AirPods, if you're interested, and uh, it there are other fields that are emitted by everything electronic. So every wireless device has the wireless, which is connecting the cell tower to the phone or your Wi-Fi router to your phone, depending on the antennas that you're using at the time. And then they also have something called uh, a lower frequency magnetic fields. So those, even if you're not using the wireless, that field is going to be emanating off your phone and actually off uh, earbuds or earbuds too. So we do recommend speaker. I know it's not what anyone wants to hear. When I first heard it, I was like, no, are you crazy? I was like, no way. I love my phone. I love my Wi-Fi. And I will never, ever, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that was my reaction. Karen wants to know, is 5G worse than 4G? And maybe you could explain what, what those are. What does that mean, 5G, 4G? Because it used to be 3G, didn't it, a long time ago? Yeah, so it basically the G is for generation. And on your phone, or you might see 5G, you might see 5G on your router. I need to just separate something out here. It's totally different. So 5G, fifth generation technology, compared to 4G or 3G is a way that the, the devices talk to each other. It's almost like, it's not a language, but it's almost like that. It's the way that the networks communicate. And there's a certain pattern. You can't see it, it's invisible in the air, but there are pulses and ways that the engineers connect all the devices. 5G is a new way that they are gonna be communicating. and it's different than 4G and it's different than 3G and 2G. It's not just your phone connecting to uh, the things that you in your home or work or, or outside do. It's actually machine to machine communication. So uh, security cameras that are connecting, self-driving cars or all, all manner of machines that uh, industry is devising to connect to each other, the internet of things, you might've heard of it. We're talking about billions of wireless devices connecting. So it's kind of like building the new highway for all these things to connect. Uh, now, when you hear the word 5G, it's really a marketing term for more 4G everywhere, where later they can put on 5G. And it also means that they're gonna be adding in higher frequencies that really have never been used in this capacity before. And that has a lot of scientists uh, opposing it for several reasons. It's gonna increase exposure overall in the air to all the frequencies we have now. It's going to have these higher frequencies that are uniquely impactful to insects and uh, also can have impacts to bacteria and all kinds of other effects that we haven't even ever studied for long-term impacts. 
Wow. Oh my God. I, did, did the people that created these devices know their danger before? Cause you know, kind of like, you know, I think about the cigarette industry, you know, mm-hmm. tobacco industry. The, oh, well the, the wireless industry makes the tobacco industry look like a mom and pop shop when it comes to creating doubt, industry spin, uh, disinformation, and you can go to the nation did an article on this on the cell phone radiation and uh, industry there's also uh, the Washington Spectator has published several articles on this as well and uh, Barbara Koppel is the name of the author and Mark Dowie uh, at the nation so and actually I have um, Dr. Davis who's our president if you're interested in a book disconnect is about the uh, the wargaming of the science. And the reason that the word wargaming is used is because there's an email that was uncovered between the wireless industry uh, PR firm talking about wargaming the science. So whenever a study comes out that has a problem, that's a big one, big study, the the wireless industry or scientists that are funded by the wireless industry criticize it. And it seems like, oh, it's not such, not such a big deal. So, Are other countries is concerned about this or maybe more concerned? Because it doesn't seem like we're very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a, well, I'll just say what the problem is in the United States. And I'll talk about other countries where they have a totally different situation, not completely, but different. So here we don't actually have any entity that is in charge of cell tower emissions, for example. We have the FCC, but they're not a health and safety agency. So there is no agency with health expertise or environmental expertise that's doing the research, uh, reviewing it, making sure that new 5G networks are safe or any of that. It's actually a complete uh, regulatory gap, meaning there's, there's no one watching the store. With the FCC, we have the wolf watching the hen house because the FCC has had long time and for years in every last few administrations, this is not a Republican or a Democratic problem. This is a a swamp that has gone on for a very long time. Um, They are uh, wireless industry executives or lobbyists or lawyers who are at the FCC. So other countries, we have a similar situation in many other countries, except in some countries, they recommend keep the phone away from the body, like in France. They actually inform people when you when you get the phone that it needs to be away from the abdomen of teenagers, that it should be away from a pregnant, pregnant woman's abdomen. There are advertisements, a public health campaign in Cyprus where they talk about keep the phone away from your head, keep it away from your uh, body, here's how. So there's a, a lot going on. Oh, and the one other thing, is that the United States and many countries, we allow more radiation, much more than many other countries in the air in terms of our limits. And Russia, China, uh, Italy have much more, Israel have much more protective limits when it comes to cell tower radiation. Yeah, this is not good news. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What about, uh, you know how like, you know, people used to smoke, well, people still smoke cigarettes, but when I was little, people smoked in the grocery store, on the airplane, and doctors yeah. smoked cigarettes. And then one day the Surgeon General said cigarette smoking is bad for your health, but they still made cigarettes, but they put a warning label on it. Do you think yeah. that would help if 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 our phones came with the warning label? Like every time we turned it on, we we saw this? Well, we think that would be really important for consumers. But the wireless industry has fought every state and every city that has ever tried to do that. So in Berkeley and San Francisco, they tried to do just that. And the wireless industry lawsuits that went on for years, unfortunately have successfully stopped the implantation of the law that they passed. So uh, in Berkeley, the law was about, the ordinance was the cell phone regional ordinance, just telling you that the phone emits radiation, and something that everyone on your call should know is that uh, it has instructions. Every phone has instructions to keep it at a distance from your body to meet FCC limits. 
limits which are not protected, but they're limits nonetheless. It's in there. It says, keep it a distance. You're not supposed to put the phone on your body. You're not supposed to hold it like this. I just saw a woman, she was holding it like this and texting. Not supposed to do that. So uh, that law was passed. They withstood all kinds of challenges. And then most recently uh, that was uh, paused because of, um, it gets all, you can, you can look this up, but it was a, um, the uh, FCC actually at that time wrote and said, you can't preempt the FCC. And so that's been halted, but people you, need to know. Well, do you think the reason people are, are, are still using it the way you say, which is not safe, is it because they don't know or because they don't care? I think it's a combination. I think most people don't know. Most people don't know that the phone is not supposed to be in your pocket or in your spandex pants. Like I see my daughter's friends, even my daughter, do all the time. And it breaks They build pockets pants. for them now. Yeah. They in do. the clothing. I've seen it. Even bras, jog bras and, and, and workout pants, just special pockets for the phone. I know. But they're, people aren't being told. I mean, when I heard about this issue way back when, I didn't know how do phones work? I mean, has have we even ever stopped to think about that? I thought it was like, I guess like magic, you know, I never, I never thought about it before. And then I thought, well, surely the government would never let anything be sold that could be harmful. That was my next thought. <laughs> And, and then, and then I started reading and I thought, who are these people? What are they talking about that? You know, they were deep in the science. The science is super technical and uh, it can be quite confusing, but I just didn't believe anyone. I decided to do the research myself on PubMed. And then finally I went, oh my goodness, like there's a problem here because there's all these studies showing harm. So I think. And then the second problem is that when people are informed, we don't want to know. We really don't. I it's mean, kind of like the environment. People just don't want to know because they figure they're going to be gone before the problem's really a problem. Yeah. And it's overwhelming. I mean, I all I could think about was, so my babies, I would put them in the sling. You know, I did wear the baby, all of this. And I put that phone right there in the baby, you know, the baby, uh, carrier right up against the, my children and one of at the time I remember being like oh no what have I done what you know and so I felt terrible no one wants to feel terrible no one wants to feel worried and I can tell you how many times have people said to me stop worrying um you know I uh it, and now I I feel like this isn't worry this is just ba it is just this is just basic you know, it's like tobacco, asbestos, lead, and we got to get on board and take control of our health. I mean, I try to eat healthy and it's, it's challenging, right? You know, you can do things in your home really hard when you go out to restaurants, et cetera. It's kind of like that with this, you can make changes in your home that make a huge difference and they make all the difference. I mean, the first step for people is don't sleep with your phone. Well, when you say don't sleep with it, like how far? Because I, I do put it on my nightstand. So how many inches, how many feet is, is optimal? I would not have it on your nightstand, but that's better than underneath your head or on your body, which people do, right? So I would put it across the room. The best thing would be to have it off uh, if you can. But oh, if you have it. to have it on, don't oh, I don't it. have to have it on. I'm just charging it at night. So I don't need it on. So you're saying if it's off, it's okay if it's near me. Yeah, well, yes, but now I have to talk about the charging situation. Oh, no, you know, you I'm really sorry. are the bearer of bad news, I aren't know. you? <laughs> I know, I, I know. Got anything good to say? <laughs> I know, I do, well, I do. I mean, I do. Um, oh, one lawsuit against the government about this because people aren't being informed and the, 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 the regulations that we have are not protective. So we actually sued the government and we won. Talk about that. That's I, we put a yeah. link to that. I'd love to hear about that. Okay. That's good news. Yeah. That's good news. Uh, and um, so, but let me talk about charging. And I am sorry to talk to you about charging. And I am telling you that as a mother of two teenagers 
who just went upstairs the other day to my daughter's room and was like, honey, no, no, you can't have the charger right next to the bed. And of course she's like, mom, mom, mom. And I'm like moving it over, just not right near the, where her head is because anything electrical actually puts out that magnetic low frequency field. So you want to be charging it, not near, you basically want your bedroom to be an oasis, free of electromagnetic radiation. Don't have cords everywhere, especially charging phones. They can really, um, there can be a high magnetic field level. So have it, you know, best thing to do is to have it in the kitchen on the countertop, really, uh, and have the phone off. So that's what we recommend. So the, so the lawsuit, people always ask, well, what's a safe level of cell phone radiation? What's, what's a safe level? Is, is the cell tower outside safe? They ask that question. It's a very good question. Shouldn't our federal government have limits that have looked at all the science and they're always up to date. They're always checking, you know, what's going on in the scientific world. Are the limits we have safe? Well, actually, we don't. And the US FCC, they set those limits for cell towers, cell phones, uh, wireless, Wi Fi, even though a lot of the things that we're using now weren't even around in 1996. That's the year that they set limits. Those limits have remained unchanged, unreviewed for, I guess, now over two decades. So the FCC uh, in 2019 said, we don't need to update those limits. And that's when we sued because it was actually a, a moment when we could, we couldn't earlier. So um, we said, you haven't fully reviewed all the science and all of the policy changes and recommendations of experts that we have provided to you uh, through a process that was an open docket. So uh, the the court ruling was last year. Actually, it was almost a year now. And they ruled that the FCC had ignored a lot of science on the record related to long-term exposure, to children's exposure, to uh, impacts to the environment, birds, bees, and trees. And they've been mandated to re-examine the evidence, actually. So that's great news, actually. Did they have to, did, was there any, did they have to pay any money? Was there any retribution? Uh, it, this is not that kind of lawsuit. Um, okay. This is a, it's a, it, it's about process. This is a process issue. Kind of like if you go to a doctor and you say, I got this going on, that going on, and this going on, and they don't even look at you. They just give you a diagnosis of, hey, you're a-okay. And there's nothing that you need to do that doctor would be liable for not having properly looked at all the pieces. So it's a process issue, not a determination of the science. And uh, unfortunately, with lawsuits like this, uh, there is no time frame. Everyone asks, well, when is the SEC going to do that? When are they going to address this? With regulatory agencies, they don't give time frames, uh, actually generally. So it could be a few years. And that is how insane uh, the whole situation is in the United States. Okay. So let me ask you a question. When they created these products, did they knew they were dangerous at the time? Or was it the kind of thing that like, oops, and now we better not tell, you know what I mean? Like, did they know going into this, how dangerous they were to people's health? Oh, that's a good question. And I'm not sure I can fully answer that, except to tell you a few things. There was no pre-market safety testing for cell phones for long-term exposure when they came on the market. There were studies showing biological effects at the time. What happened, and in the 1990s, when after cell phones came out and you told me about that brick phone and the tumor in, in your friend, there were people that were developing brain tumors and claiming it was because of their phones. And there were all these lawsuits and the wireless industry uh, put all of like millions of dollars into this huge study. The head of that study, George Carlo was the head of the study. When that study started to show effects, the whole thing stopped. Things weren't published. The Nothing happened. 
from that study. No more money was put into it. The scientists didn't publish their findings and that was it. Now, there were letters that went to all of the uh, executives of the wireless companies. And even now, uh, there have been more than enough scientists saying it is a proven carcinogen. Some say it definitely is a probable carcinogen. We have the former uh, CDC scientist, Chris Portier. We have Linda Birnbaum, who just published, along with other experts in the Journal of the uh, National Cancer Institute, a letter. Uh, and actually, let me read what she concludes, along with um, Hugh Taylor, who's chief of OBGYN at Yale, Paul Beneshai, uh, Dr. Deborah Davis, our president, and uh, Dr. Hillel Baldwin, who's a neurosurgeon. The majority of animal and cell studies have found non-ionizing radio frequency, that's uh, cell phone radiation, wireless radiation, can induce oxidative stress, a key characteristic of human carcinogens and a way that radio frequency can initiate or promote tumor development as well as play a role in the development of other diseases. Recent experimental and epidemiological studies indicate that radio frequency radiation also induces cancers of the thyroid and breast. DNA damage and cancer in these state-of-the-art studies signal the need for the public to reduce exposures to radio frequency radiation now. But yet, the companies aren't doing anything because there is no regulatory process by which they have to do anything despite uh, hundreds of scientists. In fact, if you go online, they say that, and the FDA even says there's a consensus of safety, even though there is not a consensus of safety. I mean, obviously, if this letter exists, those are four experts that are not part of the consensus. And uh, Chris Portier, the CDC um, uh, scientist who I was telling you about, uh, he has uh, released a report for these uh, brain cancer cases. There's, there's actually another lawsuit coming up in September with people who have brain tumors that they're alleging are from the uh, cell phone. And that report says that it is probable that in, to a high degree that the radio frequency can cause cancer. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, Susan, who's watching live, says a neurosurgeon came on national television more than 15 years ago stating how cell phone radiation changes the brain waves. He stated how he only used his cell phone next to his ear in an emergency only on speaker. So it sounds like some people knew this and have known this for a long time. Yes. Oh, absolutely. This has been known for a long time. And I didn't. I mean, I, you know, and I mean, listen, I'm going to be honest. I don't read the newspaper, I don't watch the news because I'm. I just, I'm very sensitive to things, but really it wasn't until I heard you speak on the, if I wasn't in that conference, I might not have even heard you. And I'm like, wow, this is really scary. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm really glad that, yeah, go ahead. Well, you just said, you know, we're so addicted to these things. I mean, everybody, children, I mean, I see people, I mean, I see like little tiny kids. They can't even talk. Like, Like I was on the airplane. Um, c- coming, I had a job in Mexico and, and there was like a, a mother with two kids and I mean, they, they couldn't talk, but they had a device. They were, they were doing something on it, playing a game, maybe. You know, this is, you think about, um, smoking, right? So with smoking, there were people that were smoking, which were adults. There's secondhand smoke that affects the kids. So it's like smoking in that it is, uh, there's a powerful industry. It takes decades for change, but it's different than smoke. And there's firsthand, secondhand, thirdhand exposure. So if you have a cell phone and you're using it, your child is going to be exposed to it because of secondhand, right? But it's different because what environmental exposure has so rapidly uh, saturated our lives at every age group, children, pregnant women, uh, you know, just everyone, Everyone uses a cell phone and they also have, I wanted to show you, this is Wi-Fi Barbie and she emits radiation. Let me, I even have a meter. So this is my house. It's very low radiation and I'm going to turn her on. Okay. It takes a minute for her to, um, there, now she's on. This was sold. Kids. 
and then she's gonna. Uh oh, I can't find the Wi Fi network. Turn herself off. Um, this is um toy by Teddy. It it connect. It's a teddy bear that connects to your phone. It emits radiation. What? How? How did this happen? How is it even legal? So you know what I think needs to be done. Like, are you familiar with documentaries like Sea Spiracy and Cowspiracy? You know those mm -hmm. kind of things that caused somebody needs to do like a major documentary to show the ramifications because those that haven't been harmed by this technology or know somebody or don't even know it, you know, it sounds like there almost has to be a class slash action lawsuit with all these people that have been harmed, you know, for, and, cause if, if it costs them a lot of money, then maybe they're going to do something about it. I completely agree. That's exactly right on board. And there are a couple, um, if our, oh, <laughs> uh, there are a couple, uh, Things that there, we don't have the documentary like you're talking about, which we so need. But if you're listening, go to Environmental Health Trust, ehtrust.org. That's our organization. There is a, a piece that just came out called Something in the Air, which is really worth watching if you want to dig into this. We also have under on our, our website under, um, shoot, I have to, under the Get Educated tab, uh, films on cell phones and electromagnetic fields. And you can watch many documentaries that have been done in the past, especially those in other countries as well. But yeah, we need we need a movie just like that to uh, to really showcase this issue. Unfortunately, um, there's a lot of money uh, working against uh, this issue. And I don't say that it's not a conspiracy or, you know, it's just basic business. So um, we are, we're working very hard, but it is a challenging media situation right now. You know, when I talk to uh, journalists, if they're not investigative reporters and they don't have time, all they do is one, two, three, look up on the EPA or FCC or CDC site and they say, ah, everything's fine. I'm sorry, what was that woman telling me? And uh, so it's it's quite the challenge. But Maybe we are text me or, uh, or email me the link to that, what you're talking about, and I'll put it in the show notes. Sure. Let me do you know, I'll send you a list of links. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, please, because because your show notes were short, so we have we have lots of lots of spaces. So uh, there's a question from a live viewer. Are some phones worse than others? I just kind of like, you know, the cigarettes, you know, how like they had um, low tar cigarettes or something like that for a while. Yeah. So the their cell phones are really variable. So at their highest power, there are phones that have different levels. And all those levels, if you actually dig in on the FCC site, it'll tell you. But the reality is that with a phone, it really depends on a lot of things. So if you're in an area of low signal, like the bars, the service is very low, your phone is gonna put out the most radiation at that time. So you don't wanna use a phone if it has uh, two or lower bars, you know, try, you know, turn it off even. And there's something you should know, your phone, let's say you're not using it. You're just, it's just in your pocket. You're not talking, not texting, you're not FaceTiming it's actually still emitting a lot of radiation when you're not using it, just doing the work of the phone, it's notifications, updating apps, whatever it's doing. So be aware of that. That's why you wanna learn to go into your settings and turn it on airplane mode, or let's say you need to use the phone, you need to use, you're in your house and you're using Wi-Fi, um, which I can talk about in a minute, but turn off the antennas that you're not using. If you're not using Bluetooth, why have that Bluetooth radiation emitting from the phone? Okay. Can we explain airplane mode to me, okay? Because when I think of airplane mode, I think I have to do it when I'm on an airplane. So what is airplane mode and how is that helpful? And if it's on airplane mode, can you still use your phone and receive a call, for example? Good question. So no, you can't receive a call in airplane mode. So airplane mode means you're turning all the antennas off. Now in the newer phones, you actually have to go turn airplane mode and then make sure other antennas aren't on. Uh, it used to be airplane mode, everything went off. Now Bluetooth can still be on. So every phone's different. So what I tell people is this, you want more time when your phone is off, like off. 
you know, when you're not using the phone, turn it off. That used to be an easy thing to say. These days, it's almost like I'm talking like an alien language if I say that. But for any of you, you know, who've been around and you're not 15, you know that there was a time when we actually didn't have the phone on all the time. It also de-stresses us. It's like there's so many benefits to having time off of your phone. But there are many people where that's your work, that's your livelihood, that's what you have to do. So you want to learn how to reduce exposure uh, and turn off antennas. You can go into the settings of your phone and you can turn antennas off. So why have hotspot on if you're not using it? Why have Bluetooth on if you're not using it? If you're on Wi-Fi, turn off the cellular. If you're on cellular, turn off the Wi-Fi. So this is for, sort of like hygiene for the phone. Now, before I explain any more, what I want to just point out is that like smoking, there's a lot like, oh, if you smoke, you have to learn how not to smoke. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, accountability put on the individual rather than the corporation that's doing the polluting. They know very well that there's a problem and they need to fix it. So similarly, we need to fix, the, the cell phone companies need to make safer technology. They've patented ways to do it and they can. And uh, there needs to be like a hard switch for turning the antennas off. So you can just turn it off and turn it on. Why am I having to educate people online with a complicated how to use airplane mode and turn antennas off? Like, shouldn't it be one switch? Why isn't it? We're letting the companies dictate the technology to us rather than us, the consumers, letting companies know what we want and how we want it. And we have to take control of the technology and tell them what we want. So here's some other things for your phone. Um, there actually is a way, oh gosh, I didn't bring it here, that you can plug it in with an ethernet. So all of this is on our website and I'll send the link to you so you can post it. AJ, on how to do safer things, because you can actually plug it your, your cell phone in with a wire and do everything. Like in my house, uh, my daughters, they, they plug in the phone. They don't even have the phone on. It's on airplane mode, but it's still working with a cord. Uh, and I do that with my laptop as well. Um, or this, this thing. Let me show you this. This is a, um, something to be aware of. These speakers. And these, these smart things, sometimes we have them near our bed, right near our head, right? Or maybe in the baby room, or maybe in our kids' room. But they emit radiation as well. I want to show you what I'm talking about, too. And... Where do you get that thing that you're holding? Can we get those and just kind of walk around our house and see how much? Yeah, this sort of hit me into the rabbit hole. Um, this is an acoustometer. There's also a safe and sound. And I'll get you a link to uh, the, the safe and sound meter at Safe Living Technologies um, or the acoustometer. And it's pretty useful because you can find the sneaky sources of, of the radiation that you never thought you had. I mean, or this thing. Um, just to show you, so this takes a minute to, to turn on these. And by the way, all of these devices have warnings in the manual. Saying I never read the book to anything ever, <laughs> like to my car, to my kitchen appliances. I've never read a manual. No one reads the manuals. Why do they no write them? The manual. They're, they're deep in the manual. Sometimes the manuals are online. Now it's the antennas are connecting. So here's, here's this. I'm going to turn it off because it's too close to me. Thank you. There's only so much of this I can handle. Um, and actually, if you go into the manual, I'm looking at the manual right here. It says, this equipment should be installed and operated with a minimum distance of 20 centimeters between the radiator and your body. And yet there are, if you just look online, and actually I, I gave a, a talk to, to the National Toxicology Program when I commented on their study, and there was a baby holding, holding one of these and singing lullabies because now these things can read stories to our children, even though they emit 
uh, type of radiation that's never been studied uh, by the federal government for its impact on children in any in any adequate way. So, yeah, we have we have work to do. Um, but at night, don't sleep with your phone. I, I said it. I'll say it again. Keep the foot to charge in the kitchen away on a flat surface. Um, use airplane mode uh, when you text. Text away from your body, but text is better than voice. And texting is better than what the kids do these days, which is they FaceTime, right? So when you're FaceTiming and you're on video all the time, it's actually much higher radiation than if you were just doing a simple text. So, so we're we're zooming right now. Is yes. is there is there is there a risk with what we're doing right now with our computers? So I am on Ethernet. That means I am fully. Um, oh shoot, I didn't. I'm. I'm going to show you an Ethernet cord, but I'm fully wired in my house. So I am not. I use this plugs in an Ethernet. So what am I on? I don't even know. How do I know? How do I fit? I know. You know, when I learned about this, I was like, wait, what? What? How? How am I even on the internet? So it sort of takes a minute. But I'm here to tell you that if I, Theodore Scarato, can do this, you can too. Can and you write are, a book or a manual like, you know, cell phone usage I, technology have, for dummies? We, we do have that. And there's actually several books. And we're actually doing a website only dedicated to how to do this, to sort of separate it out from all the science. Um, but I'm going to give you the link. So you can. You need uh, to give me some really cool show notes that we can add afterwards because this stuff, it's blowing my mind. So here's the thing. Yeah. I know like Mona wants to, Mona has a question, which I understand because I think the reason a lot of people sleep near their cell phone is they're using it as an alarm. So her question is, is if it's on airplane mode, will the alarm still work? Okay. That's a great question. Yes. So you can turn it on airplane mode. Yes. The alarm works. I recommend what we do because then you have the charging issue. Really good to get a battery powered alarm clock. Not with a cord, battery powered. They're like under $10 and you got it. It's right there. You know, they, you can, they're pretty. They could be old school, fancy, done. So yeah. Andrea that. says, are there cases we could get that will help limit the exposure? Cell so this case. is a good question. Now there are cases and they often have a uh, shielding along the back and they um, aim, they make it so that the the aim, it aims like away from you. So you're talking here, most of the radiation is going there, but actually testing has been done that shows that might not always work as you think it will for many reasons. Um, and also most people who have them, like one, one woman, she was a doctor, she says to me, I need, my, my kid has to have a cell phone because, you know, he takes the Metro to school every day and and can I, do you think that's a good idea? And I told her, your 12 year old is not gonna say, oh, let me make sure to hold the phone in the right way and put it in my pocket the right way. No, they're not because they're 12. So they might turn it the wrong way. And then you've got this beam going into you, which is not okay. Plus uh, you, it's still participating in the whole, it's kind of like just moving the stream uh, the smoke stream in a certain way. And there are things that can reflect it in others. So it's pretty challenging. I mean, if you have to have a phone in your pocket for work or other things, um, some people will get different protections, but in the end, the best thing is to use wired or to have it away from your body. Uh, and we have, that's why we have to change policy. That's why we actually have to change the law here. We have so many questions. This is like, I, and I was worried. I'm like, well, you know, if you don't do a PowerPoint, is there going to be anything to talk about? We, we could be here all day, but listen to this. Um, what about hearing aids that go into your ears and connect to the web and the phone rings in your ear? The speaker is actually inside your head. So this is, with all of these issues, kind of like with the cases, uh, there are so many models that it gets pretty dicey as to how to answer this, except to say, you wanna get um, a hearing aid if possible, that one, maybe you can turn off where it's transmitting because a lot aids are, well, before wireless, they are receivers. A receiver does not mean it's emitting a kind of anything. It's not emitting, it's receiving. 
Now, newer hearing aids, actually, some of them have transmissions, but it really depends on the hearing aid. There was a write-up, and I'll send you a link to it, of a building biologist, and the Building Biology Institute is another resource on this issue. But she was talking about different brands and what she found and what she could turn off, like your smart um, fitness trackers. People say, what about fitness trackers? There are some where you can turn it on airplane mode so that it's not always emitting. And I heard that with uh, hearing aids, they don't all emit into you. Some are just receivers, you have to find out. And that's another place where our organization, Environmental Health Trust, we're working on contacting companies, letting them know what's going on so that they can make safer products. There's no reason to have all of this, uh, these emissions if we don't need it. So if you have a hearing aid that's hearing through a phone, it just needs to be receiving. It does not need to be transmitting, for example, so close to your body. You want to know something? Just out of curiosity, I went to the American Cancer Society website and there's some information on cell phones on it. Oh, yeah. We know we, we write them pretty regularly. They've updated their site a little bit, but they actually, um, so one of the things we wrote them was, hey, people are citing the American Cancer Society. They're saying that you're saying that there's no problem or that you've made a determination and yet you've never reviewed this at all. You've looked at a few studies and put some up, but who did that? What what was the process? And they actually updated on their one of their pages, which I could get for you, where they say, we have not made an official determination. And that was because of the work that we did in asking them to be factual. Yet people say that it means everything's fine, but actually they've done no review on this issue. They posted some studies and it's unfortunate that you might go there and think that safety is assured, but it's not. Wow. So Victoria is asking like, so what, what damage does it cause? Like how is it causing these brain tumors for people? So um, there is a lot of discussion in the scientific literature on that because uh, non, it is non-ionizing. It is not the same as nuclear radiation or x-rays where it is ionizing radiation, which we is considered proven that it causes cancer obviously. Um, Non-ionizing radiation is linked to oxidative stress, and that can lead to a myriad of impacts to the nervous system and other parts of our body. And that has been put forward as a way that the electromagnetic field can contribute. It can be a tumor promoter to, um, to cancer. And there's studies where they had uh, um, mice and they were exposed to a known carcinogen paired with very low levels of wireless cell phone radiation, radio frequency radiation. So the combined, and they found that when there was that combination of the known carcinogen along with the cell phone radiation, that there was a tumor promotion effect. In other, so this is, uh, and that was a replicated study, for example. Um, and that's just one of many, many uh, studies that have looked at this, both in there's studies on humans and their health compared to their cell phone use. And then there's studies on uh, animals where they have carefully controlled exposures set up. And there's studies that have found no effects. And more often than not, those studies are industry funded studies. They are designed in a way that actually would never have found an effect, even if there was an effect or not. It doesn't it matter. They're just not designed to to uh, to adequately look at at the exposure situation. There's another study I should tell you about. It was teenagers. They did uh, they looked at their cell phone use. They assessed where they held their phone, which side, for how long. They did memory tests specific to the, lo the brain region where the phone exposure would be on those that held the phone up. And after one year, they had memory damage on these memory tests that were directly looking at the part of the brain that would receive the most radiation. Uh, so this was also a replicated study from uh, Switzerland. And 
I mean, I could talk forever about the science about what, but the, the I, you know, the other thing I should tell you about was Kaiser Permanente. So, you know, they can track people for a long time with their records. And um, Dr. Deku Lee did a study and he looked at, um, he measured magnetic fields, which are a component of uh, wireless radiation uh, electromagnetic fields, but he measured magnetic fields. So that's a non-ionizing exposure, which you hear, oh, there's no way non-ionizing exposure could cause any problem. The physicists say, oh, there's no problem. It's non-ionizing. It can't hurt you. But he found increased uh, miscarriage in replicated research. He linked it to um, increased obesity in the uh, babies that were born uh, and as well as diabetes in the babies when there was the prenatal exposure, which was higher. So there's a kind of a tsunami of research. And there's also hundreds of scientists who are signing appeals saying we have a problem. There needs to be reduced exposure. The EMF appeal in 2015, the Stop 5G appeal. Uh, stop 5G, you can just look it up, stop 5G appeal to the un United Nations and to um, to the EU. And it's been going on and on, but unfortunately, um, until we have a uh, awareness that grows, that mass awareness, which is happening, it is happening now, and our elected officials to be listening, uh, it's been, quite challenging, but I feel like we're there. We're at the tipping point. There are people around the world working on this issue. Wow. So many questions. You're not going to believe this. So I saw one from Jesse. Do EMF protective devices actually work? Well, that's, that's the challenge is to answer that question, we have to have a standard way that we test devices. And you would think that the federal government would be having a way, this is how we compare different devices, right? So that we can look it up, we can objectively look at the data and have an opinion. But because there is no acknowledgement that there's even an issue, there's no standardized way that we're checking. So until we have that, it's very challenging to answer that question. Now the shielding, there are many shielding products and oftentimes they do shield, but when you shield, you're reflecting. When you shield, you could be bouncing something from another side. So we always recommend if you have a house and you wanna paint a wall, you have a cell tower outside or something, people contact us all the time. They have, um, I can't believe I left that meter on. I'm sorry about the noise. Uh, they have like a cell antenna right outside their window, like right here would be an antenna right outside. And they go, what do I do? Can I put shielding up? And you really need to get an expert to help you with that situation to see if it's possible to properly shield with the products. There's things for laptops. Now, the problem with a laptop shield is that if it's not going down, where's it going? What if it's going up out to you, to your breasts or to your chest, to your abdomen? Um, there's still that exposure to your face. So that's why we really recommend getting, uh, if you can, Ethernet. And you can go onto our website. There's a section under the Get Educated that has a drop down that has like how to hardwire your laptop, your iPad, your tablet. Those can be hardwired also. All of these, all of these devices that we use, most of them, there's a tip or a trick to make it uh, safer to reduce exposure or to eliminate exposure, actually. Oh, boy. I know, okay. it's sort of a, hmm, it's a. All right. Um, so there's Lulu, a lot, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Lulu's asking about, what about watches that track your step or Apple watches, are, are those harmful as well? Yeah, so um, watches that are connecting to the internet are exposing you to radio frequency. So let's go to the steps first, the fitness trackers. There are ones that can go on airplane mode. So you wanna find out if your model can go in airplane mode and you simply turn it on airplane mode. Then when you want the data to go into your computer or phone or wherever it's going, you be in charge of when it does that. It doesn't have to be every second. You know, It doesn't have to be always transmitting. It can be 
once a day when you decide. It can be once a week. Uh, so we would say that in terms of the Apple Watch, if it's a phone too, it is emitting radiation. So we actually recommend against wireless wearables in order to reduce your exposure. Wow. I think once people understand how devices work, you can understand how to reduce exposure. Like when you know that the more data that's moving, the more video, the more files, the bigger the file, the more radiation, it's like, oh, okay. So a text is going to be less than a video call. Um, and you also can know that if there's low signal, the phone's going to higher power, which is going to expose you more. And then the third thing to know is that these things work all the time. Every wireless device is transmitting so long as the power is on usually. So the way to reduce exposure is to turn off the antennas or to literally unplug it. Like uh, these things, I have them unplugged. That's why they're not, they're not on. Um, at night, when you go to bed, here's another super easy thing to do. Let's say you're hearing this and you're like, oh no, this is terrible news. I, I can't do the things she's talking about. I've been there, done that. I get it. First step, turn things off at night or turn them off when you're not using them. Super easy. You're going to bed. You just, you know, turn, turn things off. If you live in an apartment with like a lot of things all around you, which a lot of people do, that's that moment when at night you want to unplug those things you can. And also the wireless printer. Those things emit all the time too. Who knew? They do. And you shouldn't be sitting next to one if it's if it's on. So my printer, you can just go in the settings and you can turn the Wi-Fi antenna off. And then I just plug in to print. Or if you don't have that capacity, just turn it on when you need to turn it on. But don't have it always be on transmitting, especially if you print once a week. Wow. So... I have a question that was submitted and I, I just want to apologize to the live viewers. See, I'm broadcasting to 10 different places. And so depending on when a person is watching, my chat is different than when they see. It goes really fast. So it disappears after a few minutes. So I apologize if I don't see your question. That's why it's best to send them in. So I almost forgot to read this one from Michelle who sent it in. And she says that she would like to know if there's a way to block EMFs from a smart meter attached to the outside of our home. We have one attached to the outside of our master bedroom. Mm. I am so glad that you raised that question because I cannot believe that I didn't talk about smart meters. That's really important. So smart meters are for those who don't know because I did not know what it was. I did not know that there was even a meter on my home. But yes, a smart meter is the utility meter, it's outside, it's kind of where it is where the electric company line goes into the meter and then comes into your home and it's basically measuring the amount of energy you use. So when you get your bill, it's based on what that meter read and measured. So the last few years, they have been swapping out our analog, meaning they don't emit radiation. They're kind of old mechanical. And you know what? They lasted for decades. There was nothing wrong with a lot of those mechanical meters. But now they're being swapped with smart meters. They emit intense peaks of wireless radiation. And they also uh, create um, uh, what's called dirty electricity, which I haven't even talked about. But anyway, that's another angle here of uh, in your home. And so if you have, I, I would be concerned about having one in your bedroom, especially if your head is near the meter. So you want to make sure that the bed is not up against that where that meter is. And I have talked to many people where their bed is literally right there. Their head is like a foot away from the meter. So you want to move your bed away from the meter. Um, if you can in your community and in your state, see if you can get an analog, that's the best thing, or at least opt out of the wireless radiation aspect. Uh, so I live in Maryland. I have to pay, which I do not think is fair, to have it, to opt out from my from a smart meter. 
And in several states, they have uh, opt-outs. You have to pay, but there's opt-outs. Get involved in your local, there's probably a smart meter group. Um, here in Maryland, for many years, we were trying to get the lawmakers to pass a law to stop us from having to pay every time, but that's, we were never able to get that done, unfortunately. But some places do have, a, have an opt-out. And uh, now shielding. I would recommend getting an expert if you're actually gonna shield because of the complexity of the issue. So uh, I would recommend opting out. And if you can't opt out, I would try to opt out nonetheless. And okay. some people have been able to do that. Linda's asking about a Faraday cage. Do you know what that is for the cell phone near the bed? Is that an effective way to shield from the radiation or EMF? I don't know. Well, what a the, cage so is. a Faraday cage is kind of like making a box that it goes in, so it doesn't emit. And I'm not sure what, which, or how, or what she's talking about. But sometimes there are people make things that you put them in, and I can't speak to if they work or not, which is the problem. So it's better just to turn it off, or to have it across the room actually, because I can't know if that Faraday cage is it's not going to be coming out of the cage. Normally a phone, when it is in a place like a Faraday cage, it's going to go to its highest power trying to connect to the tower because that's what it wants. That's its job. Its job is to connect to the tower. And the less, the more you stop it from being able to connect, the more power it puts out to connect, by the way. Wow, thank you. So Lulu, uh, not Lulu, Susanna and Carolyn want to know, well, what if you live near a cell phone tower? Yeah, so it would if you live near a cell phone tower, it's all about degrees. And um, if you have one right outside your bedroom window, um, there have been people that have reported getting sick from that. And uh, you can find out more about that tower. Uh, what are the levels? How often is it measured? Um, get get someone to come, a building biologist to come and take measurements, you know, so find out. If it's, if you have a tower, they might put more antennas on that tower over time. And, you know, you wanna be a part of the process, whatever the process is by which a company can continue to add antennas to the tower. One thing that's shocking in the United States is we have no measurement plan. Like we measure, Air pollution in the U.S., what's the air pollution levels in different cities? We measure uh, different pollutants in the water. We don't do our best job in environment in the U.S., but we do do some measuring. But when it comes to this, U.S. government doesn't do any. We're not checking what are the levels. It's the level in uh, Los Angeles compared to uh, in a city, you know, in Kentucky. What's the, we're not doing that. Whereas many other countries, they are doing it. They are, they have maps. They have the radiation levels with 5G. They have different 5G monitoring stations. In France, if you want to know the radiation right outside your home, because there's a tower, you go to your mayor and you say, I want to know what the levels are. And guess what? They get you those levels. And if they don't have them, they measure them. And that's the law. But here we have ignored the situation. It's really, it's it's amazing what's legal. You know, it's not what what's criminal is not what is illegal on this issue. It is what is absolutely legal in this country. You need to write a book and do a documentary. So please get to work as soon as possible. Oh, believe me, we <laughs> thank you, but we are. You know what I'm wondering? Because because not everybody, obviously people have different exposures and different usages. Like some people spend more time on the phone, but it doesn't, it seems like not everybody that uses it has deleterious effects. And I'm wondering, are there things that we can do to make us more bulletproof? Like, is it, does it just have to do with our immune system? You know what I'm saying? Like hmm. since, since most people aren't going to give up their phones completely, what can we do to make ourselves more safe? Other than, I mean, like, is there something we can do? Like, I don't know, take a certain supplement or something. No. I don't know about supplements and we don't, um, you know, everything that you're doing in terms of eating healthy, you know, eating green, eating a plant-based diet and all of that is key. Everything you're doing to take care of yourself is going to make you more resilient to any insults from be it radiation or any toxic chemicals. 
I mean, that's like a basic for everything situation. But um, I would say getting involved in this is really important because if we don't, I mean, the levels are, they are escalating. You can't see it, it's invisible, but it's very much there and they're really increasing. And we're gonna be less resilient because of those escalating levels combined with pesticides, toxins, um, you know, plastics, all of these toxic chemicals that are ever increasing in our environment. So, you know, it's kind of a both and like do everything you're doing. And, um, you know, if you can get involved or take one step at home, it will make a big difference. Like if all you do after this is literally just don't have that phone near your head at night, um, you're going to make a big difference. And if you next time, you know, you were just about to put the phone to your head, don't. It's like speakerphone. That is going to reduce your exposure. So all those things help. The people that are really sick. So there's the long term illness like cancer, nervous system. And then there's the there are people who are experiencing acute effects, headaches um, and, and, and other uh, rashes and other effects like that. They had a big expo. A lot of them talk about mold or a uh, large toxic exposure that just, it's like the, it's like, you know, the concept of body burden, the tipping point in your body where it's just too much. You know, you have, you have a cell tower outside your home, you might have mold or other, all these things together. And one thing might take your body to the tipping point. And we don't know what it is for people who get immune illness or other, um, other, other uh, issues where, breakdowns in their body's resilience. So anything you do makes a big difference. Great. Karen's asking about sleep number beds and I Googled it and it sounded like those weren't really safe either. You know, I did some, was doing some research on that and hadn't uh, just to find out their fine print warning. If they emit wireless, they, you can be exposed to that. Now they have different levels and I don't know if it's, the, the strength of that signal. Um, so, but it really is best to, what we recommend is not to have a wireless in your bedroom. Wow. Elizabeth says, are the old flip phones any better? Yeah, that, that I wish that was as easy to answer. I mean, let's say this about the flip phones. Some people, and they're doing it not because of the radiation, all of them, they're doing it because of the, because we are so addicted to our phones and the phones are stressing us out, right? And they're trying to like not be so addicted to social media. So they're going to the old style phones, the ones that are designed for people who are older, who might not be able to use because they want not to have to always be notified of all that. They don't want it to, it's like putting crack, right? Why have crack in front of you? Why not just move the drugs out of the room? So people are, and that's pretty useful because you're not, if you're not doing as much on your phone, then you're not going to be exposed as much. So there's that. Is it better? I, I mean, I can't speak to that actually. Uh, so, but the more antennas, the more things that are radiating and companies could be making antennas that turn off when they're not in use. And they're starting to do that to a degree, but they, it's not implemented in any way that makes the current technology safe. There's a lot they could do and they could actually do some things right away that could make things much better. Yeah. So you mentioned about wireless headphones not being good, but what about just like, you know, like regular headphones where you have them in your ear and then the wire go, you know, like you can still kind of keep a distance. Is that better? Linda wants to know. It is better to have wired than wireless, but the best thing is air tube. I can show you. I'll, I'll go get one. Okay, thanks. I should have had it right in front of me. Sorry. Guys, isn't she an interesting guest? I had no idea that this would be such a pop. I never know if you guys are going to like the show or not like the show, how popular it is. And I do my best to get to your questions, but just please understand that I use a different technology that goes really, really fast. And that's why it's helpful to always put four questions in front of your question marks and even more helpful to write them in in advance because I save them on my phone, which now I have to hold much farther away than I have been holding. 
So this is um this is an air tube headset and it just has an air tube here so that there's no traveling of any kind of magnetic field and you can just plug it into your phone. Um, I also wanted to show you an ethernet. Some of you may be familiar with this and go, no, not that. What do you, what, what, I remember that from the old days, but this is an ethernet cord and there's a lot of things that you can plug in with an ethernet. Sometimes you have to get an adapter for your devices. It's kind of like learning about food, you know, it's like step by step. So when I started out, the first thing I did was kept the phone away from my head. The second thing I did was turn the Wi-Fi off at night. That's all we had in those days. When you say turn the Wi-Fi off, like in the whole house or just on your phone? Oh, in the whole house. Even if it's in a room really far away? Yeah. But how are you going to remember? Oh, gosh. I know. It was a big pain. And then when I finally got everything hardwired, I was like, why didn't I do that sooner? It was so easy. So the thing is, some people have... Well, first, you might be asking, I don't even know what she's talking about. Find out where is your internet coming from? Do you have a box somewhere? That box, that router is what's emitting the connection, the Wi-Fi signals that connect to your devices, right? So in so, my last house, it was in a it was in a closet that was just, you know, somewhere. You definitely don't want it in your bedroom or my dad who had it literally right next to his body in the office. Or if you're in a small apartment, you might have all of these things right there. Your bedroom is your room, right? Yeah, like so, if you're in, like Angela had a question about being in the studio apartment, but it, it disappeared so quickly that I don't remember yeah. the question, but I think she was concerned about that. Exactly. And, you know, even if, let's say it's far away, move it away. Like these things will reduce your exposure quite dramatically. So- um, what we ended up doing in our home is we, we don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, we have a box that doesn't emit that, but you can get an app. Let's say you have to use Wi-Fi at different times. What you do is you get something, a modem that's not wireless, and then you get the Wi-Fi router where you can just have a button to turn it on and off. So you be in control of it instead of it always being on especially, and I say that especially for the people in the small spaces where it's, they can't move it, like it's in their bedroom, there's no way that they can get it out of the living room, then get it on something where you can just pop a button. And you can also, it doesn't mean that your whole life goes off. You can connect with the ethernet for like the, all the things that you've got connected to it. Not everything, but a lot of the things. And then, oh, so use a, a corded mouse. I'm using a corded mouse. Look, okay. cause I, you know why? Because I, I mean, the only time I use a, a, a wireless mouse is really rarely when I travel. You know what I mean? Like, cause I have, I, cause I don't usually use a laptop except when I take this job in Mexico, but I, I prefer cords for some reason. I just feel better with them. <laughs> well, it, that way you don't have the radiation going back and forth. Corded uh, keyboard, corded speaker, not a wireless speaker. Um, all those I have corded things. keyboard too. I just didn't like them when they were wireless. I don't know why, because the battery kept going out. So here's oh. the question from Angela. Should I turn off the Wi-Fi on the modem in a studio apartment at night? I would, because you're in a studio apartment. So I would, I mean, it's going to be right there in your living space. And that's an easy thing to do. Now you want to make sure, what was that? Why, what was it doing? Is there anything it was doing that you actually need? Because you might have to troubleshoot a bit, but yeah, that's a simple thing to do. So uh, my mother-in-law's house, for example. Well, it used to be that the TVs were connected with these cables. So we could turn the Wi-Fi off, no problem. Now, all the TVs are connected with Wi-Fi and this presented a serious situation that we took a little time to figure out. So, you know, uh, some things take a little time. It's just like with cooking. It takes a little time. And so, and also, what really would, let's say that you had a recipe and you were going to the store to get what you needed and it wasn't there. Unacceptable. But that's the situation with this issue is that we can't even go to the store to get something. Sometimes you have to go online to order the things that you want uh, because they're not at 
um, the stores that you go to in your house. But it, this is a, these are some of the things that we're working to change. And Environmental Health Trust, ehtrust.org, please sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we put out the recent news um, and, yeah, you know, you need to give me a lot of clickable links because there's I'm, so much I'm information giving... in the show, you're, you know, but at first I want to thank Angela for her super chat donation because you're so awesome. And Diana's asking about, I don't know what this are, this are, this is, can't speak today. Are, what are about blackout zones? Do they help? What is that? I don't know. So <laughs> Yeah, so we don't know if they help because we don't know what they are. So if you can please clarify what they are. Does she mean like zones where there's no wireless, maybe? I don't, I don't know. know. It's a new word for me. Blackout zones. Yeah. So, well, I'll go to another question from Andrea. Does shut down the phone mean powering it off or just turning it off so it goes to sleep? I, I don't okay. know. Okay. Super good question. And I, so you know how people, so, and I have to tell you, I, I'm not as savvy as I could because I literally don't use the phone as much as I, for the last few years, obviously, but when you just press that button on the phone and it goes black, that that's not, no, that's not helping you. You got to turn it power off, meaning the press and hold the both sides, turn it off. The other option is if you don't want to go through all that, you go into settings and you just put that airplane mode on, make sure Bluetooth is off. So uh, that's what we recommend. Every phone's a little bit different. And again, something that we want and that we're asking companies to do is to make that one, press one button and turn it off instead of having to go and put your password in. So like my phone, I have to put in my password. I mean, who has time for that? I don't have time for that. So, you know, we got to fix these, these challenges. Yeah, you're gonna to have to come back because there's just there's this is this is this is big this is a big subject. Mm. And, and and we want to get people all the links to your newsletter and to the video you talked about. I will. Oh, you know, there's another movie, um Burt Wolf, uh Burt Wolf's Travels and Traditions. It was broadcasted on PBS. If you're interested in a good intro video, he did two pieces which are excellent. Again, that's on our website, uh, and I'll give you the link to that. So yeah, please, you lots of links. You have 5,000 characters. I am yeah, ready. What, what exactly do you do like on a daily, like what, what is your job? Like what do you do on a daily basis to, to mm -hmm. help with this? Well, let's see. Um, so I do a lot of talking in community groups. We um, do things like we're having a conference coming up uh, in Jackson uh, next Actually, it's a few weeks from now. We're going to be having uh, Dr. Hugh Taylor, chief of OBGYN at Yale, uh, speaking along with a neurosurgeon and others presenting the latest science. We're getting that videotaped. So if you're signed up with our uh, newsletter, we'll be getting out the professional, you know, the after we'll be uh, editing it. So I'm participating in organizing that. Um, um, we do briefings for policymakers. So we have uh, you know handouts and we keep them up to date on 5G cell phones and so forth. And we meet with uh, offices on this issue. We also do petitions. Our lawsuit was a big one. We write letters, we write a lot of letters. We write letters to different uh, government agencies and uh, collaborate with the different scientists that are working on this issue. So we have a lot of meetings and you know we, that's, what, that's what we do. We educate policymakers, we educate the public, we try to help change policy, and um, we also educate other doctors. So there's an EMF medical conference um, and you can go online and look that up. EMF medical conference, there have been two. One was in California, the other one was online and you can, if you're a nutritionist or a physician or a nurse or a social worker, you can get continuing education credits. You can, as a, someone who wants to learn, actually not do the CEUs, but still uh, see all the videos. These are some of our top experts uh, educating and that as a doctor, you can actually get credits for that. So that's a great resource. So um yeah, do we do? Jerry says this should be on 60 Minutes. Have you ever been on a show like that? 
Yeah, well, I have not. Um, I will say that this issue has. And if you look up um, Dr. Deborah Davis, our president has been on CNN. Oh, there's a lot. A decade ago, there were so many stories. In fact, we have a whole section with all of those stories uh, that were done. Uh, CBC, uh, they've been on. So we're hoping that um, there'll be some new pieces coming up. But uh, it seems to have gotten a little more challenging over the years. But we, you know, it's, uh, I, I wish we were on 60 Minutes as to some of the more recent uh, escapades that have been going on. Yeah. Especially related to our websites. Yeah. Josh like, wants to know, are microwaves safe? Hmm, that's a good question. So first, let me say a cell phone is like a microwave because radio, the missions from your phone are microwaves. They're microwaves coming out of the phone, but at very low levels, they don't hit you. Now, there is a difference though, because a phone, this is a communication signal. It's a microwave with the data riding on it. Like you think of a slide with a baby going down the slide. It's a microwave with the data, data packets and information. And a microwave in your house doesn't actually have all that. So they're a little bit different, but there is similarities. A lot of the research that, that has been done is on basic microwaves, actually. So um, on the one hand, you don't use a microwave for long, right, in your home. It's just a few seconds. On the other hand, uh, there are leaks that come out of microwaves. All microwaves leak. I don't have a microwave. I use a toaster oven. And that's it's been sort of a, a shift, just like with food, changing your diet, changing how I cook. Um, and uh, if you have an old microwave, I would say you don't want you don't want an old microwave. They emit often a lot more. In my daughter's school, we had measure, measurements done in the school. And what they found out was that of the, there had to be over 10 microwaves in the school. And the kids were all standing in line in front of the microwave, heating up the food. It turned out that one of them was emitting so much microwaves that it exceeded the FDA's limit. That's like exceeding uh, the uh, miles per hour on the highway that's at a thousand miles per hour. Like we've never seen that. Like <laughs> it was, it's not funny, but it was really hot. Okay. So it was an old microwave that had been donated. So you want to make sure that if you are using a microwave, that it is not dirty, that this, there's nothing broken on the door, that it is really shutting. Um, and uh, we recommend using a toaster oven. Or And don't, like I used to do as a teen, I'm sure many of you did, I put my face right to that microwave watching the food cook to see when would my french fries be done or whatever I used to eat at the time I remember staring at it when I came home from school with my sister please don't do that and teach your teach your kids not to be right in front of the microwave wow but I can, my Breville smart oven that's okay my air fryer is okay right please tell me it's, it's okay. not emitting radiation I don't yeah think. okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, you're amazing. You really, you do have to come back because people are really, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy. They're so interested in this subject. Do you have any social media presence if people wanted to follow you or, or, or have, or learn more from you? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just show you, this is a um, virtual reality. This puts the phone near your head. So we also don't recommend this with a cell phone. Um, yeah. So go to environmental health trust. We are on Facebook we are on Twitter, we're on Instagram. And the and on Instagram, I should tell you that the go to our website to connect with it's E H Trust, E H T R U S T is the um, Instagram. And please connect with us, sign up for our newsletter. Again, it's E H T R U S T, E H Trust.org is our website. And we have two new websites that we're coming out with. One to educate you on how to reduce exposure, if you wanna learn. And oh, also there's the Baby Safe Project. That's for um, uh, pregnant women. And, uh, and then we have another one coming out on the environmental impacts. We haven't even talked about that, but wildlife, pollinators, trees, bees, birds. So that's a whole other 
big issue. Maybe you could come back and talk about some of the things you didn't get a chance to talk about and maybe do your, one of your PowerPoints. Would that be okay? Sure. Oh, I can talk. I can talk for hours. And oh, okay. go to our YouTube. If you want to learn more, our YouTube is where it's at. So we have everything. You can just start off, go in there, watch Dr. Davis talk at University of Melbourne um, and sort of, you know, oh, and we have podcasts on uh, Spotify and Apple and all that. And they're not probably like you do. What we do is if we have talks, we load them up um, and you can, there's just a lot there. So thank you for learning and being interested. And uh, we know that every step that people take towards helping on this issue is making a huge difference. It is not, I know it seems scary and shocking. And, and when I first found out, I was like, Actually, it was really traumatic. It was, it was so awful to hear some of these things. But now that I know what I know, and there's so much going on around the world, and people are working on this issue, and if we all work together, many hands make light work, we are going to fix this and have safe technology. Because I am not, we are, none of us are against technology. We just want it to be safer. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you so much for your work. Thank and you. really, please give me clickable links from everything you said. Uh, last question. Do we have to unplug Alexa, Tracy asks? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, well, you can have um, internet, you know, it's sometimes through the computer, if your computer's hardwired. But unfortunately, I haven't found a way to, you know, these are not, you can't ethernet connect these. Everything else, I have a tip and trick, like your phone. I have a way to reduce your phone, but these things, they can't be hardwired. So, and actually anyone, hey, if you want to help get on board and do a petition to Amazon about, about these, these things, these smart speakers, because I want a smart speaker too. I want one in my home. I just don't want one that emits wireless. I want to be able to say, play the song. I want, I want that. But so we You're need that option. A, so join us, volunteer with us. We will be glad you are to. such a bearer of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you, but it's important stuff. Well, thank you. Really, please yeah. contact me as soon as possible. I'd love to have you back because this is yeah. this is important stuff, even if we don't like to hear it. We can fix this. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye -bye. So Thank Bye. you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Renee Thomas. Thank you guys for all your great questions. And thanks.